subject name is compiler design and uh, today we are going to discuss about the brief overview of uh, how to access a non-local data and uh, the summary of uh, symbol table representations uh, within the concept of data structures. That is data structures how we applied uh, in terms of the symbol table uh, subject that is compiler design. Now let us see the how what is the scope rules uh, generally we are going to implement uh, in this subject that is what is the accessibility how that can be processed in terms of uh, different phases of the compiler design. Here the main one is what is the scope rules that is to be determined whether it is a local or non-local that means we are going to define several functions and that is to be determined whether it is a local to that procedure or not. So that is uh, represented by this uh, scoping of the rules and uh, a common rule is a lexical scoping or we can also call it as static scoping. That means uh, this uh, scoping is generally followed by different types of languages and this static scoping is a uh, particular way that cannot be modified once you define, once you specify the scope within that particular procedure. So that is the one of the main advantage of the static scoping. And um, whenever a procedure is going to refer some variables and that procedure contains uh, variables which does not reside inside the procedure, then that is called as non-local variables. That means uh, if a um, procedure is to be declared with some uh, names, arguments and that uh, variables which are used inside this procedure, which are used inside procedure, here that is maybe the array representation that is uh, a variable a or some other uh, representations which are to be declared. And before that also we may implement some of the int x and some data which we are which we are going to refer to the program. But within this limit, this procedure, some of the parameters which are to be described that is uh, within that procedure that is and outside that that is non-local that is a non-local. So that is this scoping and non that is two types of scoping. One is static scope, then one is static scope. That means so uh, once it is a fixed fixed variable within that procedure, another one is that is to be changed dynamically at runtime at the point of it is changed. This is not this is a modified one where it can be implemented that is different as to the previous one. That is where we declare that is can be modified as to that of uh, previous one. So, there are two types. One is static scoping and dynamic scoping. And the main important in this uh, scoping rules uh, is one of the concept important one is block. Here, how can you say it is scoping belongs to the particular function and outside that one that mainly uh, deals to the block. Here, block represents um, its own local data. Block represents its own local data. Here we can represent a block inside another block. That is, a block can be nested also. One block inside another block. Block one inside block two. That is, we can represent several blocks inside one block and another block. It is uh, this property is referenced as block structured languages. Some of the programming languages which follows this notation that is called as block structured languages. And uh, scope of the declaration, here what is the scope of the declaration is mostly related to this nested rule. Or scope of the declaration is given mostly closely related to this nested rule. So we know that nesting of, nesting means block can be kept inside, and like that we can have array of several blocks. We can have array of several blocks. And if the name, suppose if that uh, x which is not declared in b, then the occurrence of x in the scope of declaration of x such that 
B has declaration of X, B is most closely nested around B. B that means here X is not declared in B, suppose. If that X is not declared in B and occurrence of X is in the scope of X in B dash. What is the occurrence? The occurrence of X in the scope of declaration X in B dash. That means B dash is one block. A B is one block, so but X is declared in B dash and X is not declared in, um, say this variable is declared and this is not declared. So then B dash has declaration of X, that means it is declared of X and uh, B, da B dash is closely nested around B, that is also for this property also holds good and this property also holds good. And, uh, it is very easy to handle compared to the procedure. If you compare with the blocks, that is one of the programming languages which uses this type of st structural notation that is called as block structural languages. So these structures have the flexibility to use at any point of time and they can uh, easily modify as per the requirements. And uh, it uses a stack for memory allocation. It uses, we know the concept of stack where it uses the elements to be pushed and pop out of the from the stack and uh, space or memory allocation allocates space completely uh, with complete procedure at one time allocated space for complete procedure body at one time so b dash has a declaration of x and it is mostly closely nested around b here blocks are simple compared to the procedure. When we compare with the procedure, blocks are very simple. We know that there are two types of scope. Two types of scopes. One is lexical scope, that is static scope or lexical scope. Static or lexical scope. So the static or lexical scope. In this type of scope, a scope is verified by the examining the text of the program. For example, in programming languages such as Pascal, C and Ada, these languages are used mainly static type of scoping. We know that what is static type of scoping. Static scoping means where the type of data that is to be declared once and that is cannot be modified further, that is fixed, that is called as static type of it. And these languages are also called as block structured languages. So we know that what is a block, a group of statements can be kept inside one block. So statement 1, statement 2, like this we have some group, again this block contains statement 2, statement 4, like this. Some block, this block contains some statements and this block contains some statements. And we can put one more block inside this block and inside this one more block. Like this, a series of blocks can be uh, written. A series of blocks can be written. So this example of this one, suppose for example, this is the block where beginning of the block, example of block, how to create a block. We have to write the name, we have to give the first initially opening brace, that means block starts and uh, we will write the statements, different uh, declarative statements and then block ends, block ends by representing this uh, open closing brace, this closing brace represents the block. Like that uh, a block can be represented with the help of the statements and as many number of blocks you can insert as per the requirements. And we can group that blocks one side, one inside another one. And if needed, we can also nest man as per the menu. So this type of structure of these static procedures which follow some of the languages that is Pascal, C and Ada. So this is called as a static scoping or lexical scoping. For example, if we are going to access some data which is specified outside the block and what is the data which is specified inside the block. See for example here we have considered a main block in this main block and open brace and closing brace and blocks are represented so this block represents P naught. 
This block represents B0. And another block is represented that is also one block that is B1. That is B1. Within B1, we are having two more blocks that is B2 and B3. So, block B0 contains B1 and uh, within this B1, we are having two more blocks B2 and B3. Within this block B1, we have declared A and B. And B2, we have initialized somewhere that is A equal to 2 and we are going to print the value value values of A and B. And here uh, we are going to declare initialized a B value that is 3 and uh, we are going to print that uh, B value is 3. Now, after, uh, after initialization of the values, what is the scope of the value that is to be determined at the scope level? That means here the scope level is B0 to B2. B0 to B2. So, what is uh, B0 to B2 here? So, what are the variables that is to be declared here? A equal to, that is what is the value of A is 0. So, this A equal to 0 which is available at block B, B0 and that is to be available at B2. And uh, what is the variable that is B equal to 0? That is also B0 which is declared at uh, scope block level B0 and then uh, at B3, B0 to B3 and B equal to 1. So here B equal to 1, B1. Here B equal to 1 is at the block level B1 and then it uh, concludes at B3 level, block B3 and A equal to 2, B equal to 3. So, A equal to 2 is completely, it is defined, it is a local scope. So, it is B2. And B equal to 3, it is completely within the block B3. So, it is B3. So, A equal to 0, B equal to 0, it is assigned at this level, that is block 0, but it also B0 to B2. That means here that A is to be uh, modified within this block. So, that is B0 to B2. Whereas, uh, B equal to 0, B0 to B3. So, where the block 3 is also defined the B value. And B equal to 1, A equal to 2. B equal to 1, that is to be defined. So, here B equal to 1. So, that uh, B equal to 1, which is defined, this is at block level B1. And then that is to be used B2 and B3 also, once it is defined within this scope. So, here it is local to scope, it is outside the block it is defined. Outside B2 it is defined, so outside means within the B1. Outside means not within the B0, it is within the B1. Uh, so, B1 it is to be included with B2 and B3. So, that is why B1 to B3 scope, that is B1, B equal to 1. Whereas, the uh, first A equal to 0, it is defined outer scope, outer of all the blocks. That means outer of all the means B1, B2, B3, all to be accessed. So, that is why it is B0 to B3. Whereas, B equal to 0, this is defined at the level outside the scope also. So, that is why it is also B0 to B3. So, A equal to 0, B equal to 0, which is defined at the level outside scope. That is why the scope is to be defined B0 to B0 to B1, B2 and it is defined B0 to B3. Whereas uh, B equal to 1 which is defined B2, so that is why uh, B equal to 1, B1 with B3 and uh, these two scopes are clearly indicating within this one. So that is why it is A equal to 2 and B equal to 3. This where these two scopes are determined. In. So I, we are going to verify this uh, scope and uh, name which is uh, local axis or it is non-local axis. That means it is the block which is defined within this within this scope. That means here A equal to 2 defined as block B2. So A equal to 0, B equal to 0 within this block we are defining. And uh, in this um, main block that is this B0 block, we are going to define another block that is B1. So, B1 which contains B equal to 1 which contains a B1. 
it is block B1, a separate block, a separate block which is determined B equal to 1. And in this block, we are going to determine that is B equal to 3. So, as a separate notation, that is A equal to 2 and B3. So, B equal to block B2, block B3. So, block B3 is A equal to 2 and B equal to 3. And this we are going to define as a level or an inside scope of this B0 of B1 as inside this scope and B2 within this scope, B3 within so B0, B1, B2, B3. So as per this consideration of B1, this B A and B is outside of the scope, but we can access that uh, where name it is called as non-local names and where that is access within A equal to 2, that means here A is access, within the, this is local to this one, print of A equal to A, whereas print of B, it is accessing uh, that is uh, outside the scope that is defined of B2. So what is the value of B1 here? 1. So that is to be uh, reflected as a print of statement here. Here in this case, the value of A is outside the scope which is defined. So that's why it is accessing a non-local. Whereas here B is referring as index in local. So it represents the value as 3. So that's why we are going to refer each time uh, the variable, uh, the names that can be accessed uh, uh, several times uh, by listing out the names, block names one by one with the help of this uh, block structure. And we are going to validate each and every variable, what is the result of each outcome at that particular block. It may be modified after uh, execution of the sum of the blocks and then we are going to retrieve uh, other values also as per the uh, notation structures. Here a lexical scope without nested procedure. That means previously we applied some of the procedures within what is the scope is to be considered without uh, nesting of these procedures? So nesting of the procedure means procedure is to be um, procedure with uh, declarations or to be done within the another procedure. Like that we can carry out the task with differently. So this is called. So a procedure definition cannot occur within another in C. That means here the a program has to be written without the definition, then that means uh, main itself on function. So that's why we are going to compulsory, we have to write a main with. So without main method, we cannot execute the C program. So there is a procedure is compulsory. So without uh, definition of that one, you cannot go further that one. So that is the main criteria requirement. And uh, suppose if there is any non-local reference of the function is there, then uh, that reference is to be declared outside of the function only. Suppose here you have defined a function with uh, parameters a, b and we are going to simulate this uh, different uh, names of the parameters a and b inside uh, this function. But uh, let us see if any, uh, uh, any non-local reference you are taking then that is to be declared outside. So int c. So c is a non-local to this function. C is non-local to this function which is defined as a parameter of A and B. So A and B you can use as a local reference, non-local reference is C. So what are the non-local, like that we can use several non-local, all non-local references which will be considered as global and this cannot be allocated at compile time. That means it, why? Because at, uh, at times of running this very these uh, variables may change uh, at certain period of time before any other procedures are to be implemented. It, it comes out with the results and based on that it uh, takes that one. So that's why it is to be reference is to be considered as a global, global. non-local references are all global and uh, any non-local is any, any name with non-local to one procedure then it is a non-local to all procedures. That means uh, previously we applied, suppose for example, uh, in one procedure we have considered this uh, this AB. 
see as one uh, non local reference which we have considered then if that uh, another procedure also which is to be uh, running with some xy and here this procedure also contains a reference uh, to c so this is a non local reference of this function and the same c is also non local reference for this uh, function also so the uh, non local reference are uh, to be uh, applied for several procedures which are to be mentioned in this uh, process so in the in the suppose in the absence of nested procedures we are going to use a stack allocation you can use a stack allocation and while implementing this non local what is the storage mechanism that is to be allocated static statically only static procedures applying and this is to be a non local name must be local to the top of the stack where you declare some uh, references that is always the reference to the top of the stack so stack allocations of non local has some of the advantages one of the advantages is non local shall we know that it is a static allocation that means that the, the it is to be fixed at that particular point of time that is compile time uh, that is uh, that is called as static scope or lexical scope and also you can pass some parameters uh, as a procedure that means uh, we told a procedure with uh, parameter 1 comma parameter like that we can write uh, and then this procedure returns uh, some uh, return some name some value that is called as return type of that procedure it, it can pass the parameters and uh, return as some value and then it can have the uh, static allocations and the procedures are to be we have st static storage allocations with a uh, local scope so where the uh, non local reference is there it is to be allocated with all the references which are available in that particular procedure so the, the, that's where the that's where we have where the nesting of the procedures with the lexical scope can be implemented lexical scope is the nested procedure which contains nesting path accessibility links parameters and display display means that is what is the uh, uh, result that is to be carried out for this task and another one is stat dynamic scope here we know that previously what is status scope that means it can be done at, but uh, the uh, dynamic scope that means here a new activation inherits existing binds of non local names so any reference which is to the available to the non local then that is to be activated as a storage with the new activation record in the previous videos we have discussed about the activation record where it contains several parameters so it is going to activate a new activation record and binding of the uh, name to the existing name takes place and then it modifies the values first one is deep axis and if it follows some approach first approach deep axis another one is shallow axis here deep axis means where the, that uh, it, it search for the corresponding name can, uh, until the um, end of the stack and uh, the, in this process takes very long time to access but that particular name to as a non local and uh, another method is shallow access where the previous values are restored that means any time it is called it it calls once again a restoring of the activation uh, restored and then activation ends the non locals are to be looked up directly non local access key names can be looked up directly and uh, time taken to maintain these values when activation begins and activation so activation record uh, whenever the procedure is called activation uh, record is to be called once again activation record is to be created that means it is called as a new activation record If the whenever activation record is called, that means invocation happens. That means it begins procedure, begins the procedure, and uh, it gives the access to the non locals and restoration of these functionalities, and then stack implementation. Everything can be done, and after completion of the procedures, then end activation record. Activation record is to be ended with this format. So this is to be looked up with the either of the functions. Say that is two approaches. either a deep axis or shallow axis a new activation 
inherits existing bindings of non-local names to a storage in the new activation record. Every time when you call the names uh, outside the scope that is non-local axis, then it maps to the corresponding entries in the table that is uh, stack implementation and uh, it uh, while uh, doing this searching process it may apply either deep axis or shallow axis. Deep axis means it takes uh, it, uh, it searches all of its touch one record one two three until it doesn't found last record also it will match until that means it keep on doing the search deep levels also but takes long time that's why it is taking long time to access this non-local whereas shallow access previous records are there that is to be restored once again so a restoring mechanism previous value suppose a is 3 a equal to 3 so that value is restored once again and it keep on update the values for the current procedure call invocations and then it uh, um, the update that value and then it looked up directly and uh, uh, the time taking process compared to the deep access is very less and it directly invocates update the value and then keep uh, and then uh, begins the records and then closes uh, and then closes the activation record automatically so this type of procedures are to be implemented in time Another one is the concept of symbol tables. Here it is called an important symbol table is an important data structure which is used for creation and maintenance by the compiler in order to keep track of the semantics of the variable. So we are going to store some of the data. Uh, that data is to be stored in, in the form of a symbol table where what is the that means what type of data it is storing that means static scope scoping and binding related information that means name of the variables and the instances of variables which is uh, a previous instance what is the uh, outside the scope and uh, what is the variable updation function names class names object names like that it will uh, put a create a record name serial number one two three four and the name of the instance and value so class name the name one with uh, R x variable a with 10, 20, 30 like that. The, it is to be created with the help of these notations. Why with 40 like this? These values are to be stored inside the symbol table. And this uh, symbol table is going to create a new entries at any, any time. If you want to create by logging by creating this function with this symbol table and then you can create the entries and you can also see whether the entry is already existing. See for example name 1, name 1 is uh, to be created then before creation it will verify whether the entry is available in the symbol table or not. So it keep on searching value 1 as yes, it is matched so it is the already entry is available. If already entry is available then it does not create a new entry, then it, it is going to immediately update the values of the corresponding entry in the symbol table. Suppose if the entry, uh, you are going to create an entry name 4, but this entry is not available, then it searches the uh, entry in the symbol table. If this entry is not available, then it will create a name, a name with the name 4 and it will update the value as corresponding value that one. So like that it, uh, uh, follows uh, some mechanism where uh, storage allocation of these uh, variable informations and uh, binding the uh, bonding to the names which are keep uh, changing every time outside the scope of this runtime that, that is to be kept uh, always in the symbol table you know, as a symbol table information. So like that there will be several entries we are going to be put in the symbol table every time and that uh, names are to be declared. So we are going to write a or uh, uh, set of instructions with the several lines of code. Every time we are going to write, create one and the names of uh, at any point of time during the invocations. So all the names are to be reflected in this uh, symbol table with the corresponding variable names, constants, procedures names, function names, and uh, uh, literals are also constants and strings. We can write a string to define several types of strings and compiler generated temporaries and uh, some of the labels which are uh, defined in the source languages 
all these to be represented uh, are to be declared as string names, function names, constant names, variable names, all to be everything. That means this type of information can keep on changing and updating the responding. That means here we are going to run a <coughs> functionality where that name is available or not. So that entry will be checked out and if the entry is not available then it creates a new entry. Suppose if the entry is already available then it did not create a new entry then automatically uh, updated the corresponding value which is available in that uh, symbol table or resolve any reference is there we can also resolve the, uh, that local reference and given access to non local reference also and in this way we are going to uh, implement this uh, symbol table information. See here, it can be implemented either a linear fashion or binary search tree or hash table also. So, <coughs> a linear search, it is can be a symbol table can be implemented by any of the following three ways. One is a linear, uh, linear that is sorting or unsorting list. That means here we are going to store the names and their corresponding information. That is one uh, one type where that means here sorting means uh, fixed ordering is required or not one two three four that sorting wise or unsorting so randomly we can that means one six five two like this unsorting way of uh, representation of the uh, names which are required then that is to be allowed in this way of linear fashion whereas binary search tree where it contains the root element where root elements and the corresponding child um, uh, nodes, node 1, node 2 like this and again this node contains several other nodes, node 3, node 4 like this. Keep on uh, represent the information with the parent child nodes and another one is hash table in a type of the information. This is one of the most important uh, data structure which is used for the purpose of symbol table information. So here uh, key and value pairs, uh, key hash key and value pair type of information that is to be used. So here the linear list of records where sorting means so here identifier 1, the identifier 1 means identifier 1 the corresponding value, identifier 1 and the corresponding information which is used for this data and another data, data 2 with the corresponding uh, information that is information means the value of that particular data like that uh, n number of data items and the value of n to be recorded as for the hierarchical structure that is uh, 1 then 2 like this as a linear fashion. Linear fashion means one after other elements. That means it cannot be allowed all the elements at a time. Uh, it can be allowed the elements as the process of inserting one element then moving to the second element then third element like that keep on uh, placing all the elements one after the other up to n elements. So, available elements are to be uh, available at the end of this this stack and the, we are going to implement uh, this procedure. And uh, <coughs> a second one is uh, that is um, hashed, hashing table, uh, that is the record, uh, parent child record and third one is hash table structure where hash table structure one is we are calling it as a hashing scheme. Here this table contains uh, two parts. Uh, one is um, a, a fixed array of pointers that means this is the pointer, this is one pointer, that is one pointer. Like this there will be several pointers and uh, this uh, pointers is represent to table entry. So this table entry is one and this is second table, this is third table entry. And here the table entries as organized as separate linked list separate linked list. We know that linked list uh, contains uh, two parts uh, that is uh, first uh, inform that is node uh, the, that is what is the information and uh, that is the left and right links. So that is to be uh, to be used as the purpose of data uh, maintaining from one, one node with the another node. Like that there will be several uh, list of elements. Each list contains so for example here the word which is stored as last and that is given as link to another node that is action and that is given a link to this. So first one is a link to the first node of this one and this information is to be kept and this third part is to be given as access to the another link. So there are total three parts. 
and uh, if at all if there is no link then we can uh, keep this uh, no part as uh, third part that is as uh, null indicating that there is no further nodes which are available in that picture. So first we can take the array of this uh, several entries of that hash table and each entry is pointing to this is there is here there are like this one two three four several n number of entries and uh, so here uh, zero we started and there will be two ten so zero to two ten that is indicates that two level entries two level entries of this one hash table say for example ninth entry ninth entry we are entering some data and twentieth entry we are going to enter some and thirty two th data entry we are going to enter some data so where, where the ninth entry we are going to data that is the value that is cp and that is linked to n and where this data that is there is no other point here indicates that there is n of this one so cp and n these are the two data items which are uh, which are linked this is these two are linked to this ninth table ninth entry of the hash table and this is indexed by the value so header is indexed by the hash value this is called as array of list array of list of headers which are followed by indexed by the hash values similarly 20th 20th also uh, with this one linked with uh, uh, one uh, data item that is match another one 32 data item which is uh, linked with this is last followed by action and followed by ws so these are the three items and the last item is not all so if there is no pointer which link to the next element next node of this list so here they we can stop this one and we are going to retry the display the data elements which are linked to the corresponding entry so like that each record in the symbol table appear exactly as per the mentioned one of these fields so here record one what is the data available and what is the entry in that symbol table and uh, the next entry that is what is to be available so like that it is to be uh, to be displayed as per the the structure notation as well organized uh, as a separate linked list of data items uh, as per the hash table notation. This is known as hashing scheme. Uh, this uh, scheme is nothing but hashing scheme where data entries and the symbol table with these values are to be separated with the uh, separate uh, notation. And this is to be most used widely used the uh, concept where the key value pairs corresponding entry and the corresponding so key value pairs <coughs> is to be collected and if any key which is related exact the corresponding value is to be matched then that is to be paired with the corresponding element like that we are going to retry keep on searching the each of the elements in the entries if any entry match to that particular symbol table then it retrieves the corresponding name suppose if 20th a uh, key that is uh, which is mapped to this one then corresponding values are to be retrieved and we are going to examine that list of items so like that uh, there will be several uh, records so many records you can kept and then exactly use that many number of fields and each time we are going to store some information in the symbol table about the data and items so what is the data items we are going to be stored in the symbol table for example identifier if you take what is the data which is related to this identifier means what is the name of the identifier what data type it is using that means the the identifier data type and whether it is a block level if programming comes under scope of this one and local or non-local accessibility whether it is declared inside the parameter or outside procedure what is the scope and uh, what is the base pointer that is offset from the base pointer that is to be declared and some of the operations which are to be used in this uh, symbol table are uh, lookup is one operation another one is insert another one is delete that means uh, whenever a new entry is to be available that is uh, identifier whenever you are going to be inserted it will verifies and then uh, it keep on inserting that entry and uh, whether that uh, is already available finding the most recently created entry is it already created entry and the recent created entry by applying the method that is lookup and if you want to delete any entry from the table that is removing the most recently created entry that means uh, the entry that is to be deleted with that method that is these are the 
three methods which are to be used that is uh, performed in case of symbol table. So uh, we are getting that is identifier one with the name identifier one with the names like that uh, list of data items two three four five like this up to n n identifiers with the corresponding storage and uh, if you want to keep on inserting several data items interest using the lookup method and in that is uh, know that whether this one is already available or not by applying the lookup method and if you want to insert a new one you, uh, you carry on with the method that is insert and if you want to uh, remove that uh, data item from that uh, symbol table then you can apply the operation that is uh, delete operation so these are the three main uh, methods which are performed across the symbol table mainly the information which is used for the uh, identifier is the name of this thing that is um, so other related information also stored the basic uh, requirement of the information which is required as name that is what is the name of the identifier and what data what data type it is storing that may be integer value or uh, some other uh, string value what is and what is the level block level uh, nested level and uh, lo local accessing either local or global accessing and what is the offset procedures that is base point and whether from the local variables point of view or parameters point of view any name resolving references that is to be uh, carried out is the noted down in the symbol table information and these are the operation that is one of the insert operation where we are going to insert a new identifiers names inside that the symbol table and if you want to know that look up whether the name is uh, available using the lookup and another function install function insert a new symbol into the symbol table every time we are going to keep on using the insert but uh, sometimes you can also use a new method that is install method and here uh, a symbol uh, each symbol has block levels first block level one we are going to use that is keywords block level two global variables and block level three parameters so a, a method that is install method which is going to create an id entry object and then store into the symbol a separate id is to be created entry whenever a new first time that is to be created then it will create a record that record is called as id entry that particular object which is stored inside the symbol table and uh, garbage collection is one of the important main point that means whenever we are going to resolve the references or unused objects that means dynamically changing the variables at any point of the program and some of the variables which are not reachable at that particular point that is called as unreachability that means the program allocates some of the objects at runtime but those are to be used or not used can be verified if if longer 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 duration of that uh, uh, identifier may not uh, may not be used for uh, several times or longer time uh, those, so, so such type of objects are to be identified and then it is to be pointed with the group. so pascal programming and c programming the, those have do not have this garbage for garbage collection but uh, it explicitly doing the way of method that is called as deallocation of the story that means it calls the corresponding object and then it uh, doing this activity where the where we think that that particular object is no longer used to be inside the program that means that particular function it is called after that it is not updated and then remained in the program only why because it occupies storage space a space will be occupied so that's why it is not used in sir it is not used in the remaining part of the program not used in any uh, in other parts or any parts of the program and remain uh, not active or uh, used by this scope so that's is to be deallocated and in some programming languages it is to be called explicitly and then and this is to be reused if sometimes if you want to regain the control of the previous one that means a for example variable a is declared and should be used at particular point not used at particular long time and you want to use once again that is reused once again so the uh, some programming languages allows that concept of this uh, uh, but um, garbage collection remains until program finishes so you can explicitly call or perform the garbage collection so lisp is one of the programming languages where it performs the garbage collection 
and another one is dangling references are going to be occur when storage is uh, has been deallocated that means uh, suppose if that uh, variable a uh, identifier a which is uh, that used and uh, not used at uh, some period of time and uh, remained as that one and a is to be available but this is not used after butler block only it is used and not used and then it is remained as it is then uh, we have not deallocated suppose if the deallocation explicitly also you do not perform what happens then this is to be chance of uh, giving a reference to another uh, variable also if there is a chance of giving another variable then there is that reference is called as dangling references there is a chance of occurring a reference to another identifiers also then consumes that that's uh, that case we are going to resolve the issues with the help of this garbage collection so we are going to call the explicitly by implementing that this the deallocation of the storage and then it is better to use the programmatic approach where the uh, symbol table mechanism resolving references can be avoided this is the concept which is available in the book that is called as compilers principles and techniques of prestiti uh, next uh, thank you all of you next session we are going to come up with a new topic uh, thank you once again all of you thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates